Now, Nigeria's bilateral trade with the Netherlands have assumed an upward profile. The imports and exports between the two countries in the first quarter of this year was $79 billion. That's more than 10 trillion naira. Well, trade volume between Nigeria and the Netherlands has shown a steady growth since 2016. The Netherlands ambassador to Nigeria and prominent representative to economic communities of West African states, Brett Ronhar, said the Dutch private sector players have started massive investments in Nigeria's agricultural sector in some states of the Federation. Well, Deputy Ambassador of the Netherlands to Nigeria, Michelle Delling, joins me in the studio here live to actually look more into these issues and the relationship between the Netherlands and, of course, Nigeria. Thank you very much for your time, Michelle. Thank you very much for inviting me. Let's start this way. The relationship between Nigeria and your country, has it been? Let's, let's look at it. For some time, has it been? You've been here. What's your assessment? It's, it's actually very good, the relationship. The bilateral relationship, uh, it's a long-standing relationship. Uh, it, it, it started already before independence of, uh, of Nigeria when, when Dutch companies uh, established, established themselves here and uh, we see an increase in interest from the Dutch side uh, to do business with Nigeria not only that but also to invest you know I always tell people uh, there's not much use in just shipping containers with goods from Europe to Nigeria you should also ship knowledge expertise uh, and investment Mm -hmm. So one should follow from the other. And I think we are really uh, making progress as far as that's concerned. Investing, we've heard of agriculture, and I think there's, there's enough of strength when it comes to, uh, in that aspect when it comes to your country. Tell us, how has it been, the agricultural sector in your country, and look at what we have here, what can we achieve? You know, I always say, think agriculture, think about the Netherlands. Um, and why do I say that? If you look at the Dutch export, we are the, second, the world's second biggest exporter of agricultural products. And we are a small country. Our population is a little bit smaller than the population of Lagos State. Uh, but what we did is what we just made it intense. So uh, different levels of horticulture and, and poultry and dairy. Um, so we've, we've gained that expertise on uh, how you can increase yields, basically. Uh, now, in Nigeria, of course, we see that Nigeria has a vast land mass uh, and with quite a lot of production, uh, but there are a lot of things that happen after that. So the, the, the so-called post-harvest losses, that half of the tomatoes that are harvested in, in Kaduna or Kano, once they reach Lagos, you, know, you, you exactly. can only use a fraction of them. So these are things uh, where we see how we can assist uh, Nigeria, uh, how we can transfer that knowledge and technology that we have, uh, that we've built up over the years, um, to the Nigerian practice. Mm -hmm. Because when, when I look at the Nigerian factor which you've identified, I see infrastructure as a challenge. I see storage facilities as a, as a challenge. I see processing also as a challenge. I also see that massive um, mechanized kind of farming. We are yet to get there. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, what do you think? Where do we start from? This government kind of very focused what we've seen, the agricultural sector, but are we really getting there? Are we, are we on the right part? I think you're very right when you say the government is focused, but it's also clear that the government cannot do it alone. Uh, mm -hmm. So it has to come from the private sector. Mm -hmm. um, and then the private sector looks around and looks for good examples or assistance. Um, for example, I was in, in Plateau State uh, last month uh, and I visited a number of potato farmers there. Uh, and it's all very small scale. And of course, if you really want to, to increase production and increase your quality, you should grow and it should be mechanized and it, it, it should be done with uh, specific types of potato that are resistant to certain diseases. Um, and that is technology and knowledge that we have that we are now trying to work with uh, farmers in Plateau State to do so. Um, you know, and that is basically where I'm coming from. Uh, it's not my job to sell potatoes to Nigerians. It's my job to assist the Nigerian, in this case, agricultural sector uh, to grow better, to, to increase their production. Uh, and that is beneficial, mutual beneficial for both of us. Both of us. Yeah, in, in, indeed. Now let, let's look at 
the ease of doing business thing instituted by this administration. There's been a lot of conferences. We had economic summit together and yes. a lot of issues were identified with regards to the ease of doing business. Now, how are people coming in, maybe from your country or other, other foreigners coming to meet you? What's, what's the impression about Nigeria at the moment with what is going on now? There's always a challenge. Uh, it's a challenge that everybody who lives in Nigeria, you and me and, and our viewers, face every single day. Um, which means that we spend a lot of time on resolving problems that might, should not have been there. Uh, talking about electricity or roads or water or any other infrastructure. Um, but if you look at Nigeria as an investor, you should also see the market. So, you know, people need to eat and drink. Uh, there's always a market for products. Um, so you need to, to adjust yourself to the Nigerian situation, um, look at who are your customers, yeah. and then make sure that you produce something that is of interest uh, for them. The ease of doing business, uh, I also met with uh, the, the, the different committees that are uh, working on that. Um, it's not easy, but I think they're, they're really doing their best. But they are faced with, with certain realities, uh, on, on also on infrastructure, on red tape, on, on sometimes maybe even legislation, uh, on the ports. Uh, you know, you can, you can try to do all the things you do as long as a certain road to the Apapa port is not fixed. Uh, what are we talking about? Tell you. So. Tell you. And I think those are the things that the ease of doing business group uh, is, is now also looking at and, and Yeah, tackling. intending to, to, to yeah. achieve. Now, this population, you've talked about it and I want to look at it. Many say the population, Nigeria in particular, this population should be an advantage. But I, I don't see it being an advantage. The projections for us, this population is still going up, you know, higher and higher. Yeah. Do you think this population is really working for us? Um... Yes. Well, you know, that is, that is a difficult question because you can only look at <laughs> it's it... It's like yes and no. Well, you, you can only s look at it in, in, let's say, in 10 years from now, and then you say, where are we then? How many Nigerians are there then in, in the country? But um, looking back, I know that already 100 years ago, some economists said, oh, the world is overpopulated, and uh, in 1900, we will not have enough food for the population that lives on the planet then. Well, we are now 2017. We do have enough food on the planet. It's a matter of distribution. The food is not equally distributed. Uh, but you know, we as human beings, we have the capacity to produce enormous quantities of food. Maybe we do it inefficient. Maybe there should be other ways of doing it. Uh, but I don't think that that will be the issue. The issue, of course, will, will probably also be if you have such a huge young population, uh, where will they work? What kind of jobs will they have? Um, but you know, young people always find something to do, and let's just hope that what they find to do is, is positive, is constructive, is, is on, uh, like an entrepreneur, or maybe like a teacher, or a nurse, uh, and not like an area board. All right, yeah, I get what you say. Now, 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 still talking Nigerian economy, everybody knows Nigeria depends on crude oil. Crude oil proceeds, even countries like Angola, and all of, all of that, they, they still depend solely on crude oil proceeds. But a country like your country still depends on agriculture to threat. Now, do you see this oil price issue? I don't, it's, still, it's, still, it's, still, it's still a headache, you know, affecting all, all, all of these countries. Do you see us diversifying our country just like that? Sort of a sudden? Yes, I think you would. You know, there are some people who say, oh, oil is like a curse, is a, a, a black curse. But then, if you say that, then you, are you really saying that it would be better if Nigeria would not have oil than if there would n no money be available except from agriculture or from, from smaller industries? So the, the fact that you have oil is not the problem. The problem is that the money that was made with the oil uh, obviously disappeared in all kind of directions. So if you use that money to invest uh, in industry and in agriculture, yeah, because y you shouldn't, if you put more emphasis on agriculture, it doesn't mean you will stop with oil. Yeah. You will continue with oil, but use the oil money productively by investing in other sectors of the economy w from the money that you generated with oil. 
Mm, indeed. Now, we're, we're going to take a break and I'll still be having Michelle here. We'll be talking more on um, Nigeria, Netherlands, what we can learn and also issues surrounding the economy generally. Stay with us. It's still Business Nigeria. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us while well, I still have with me here, Michelle. And well, we've been speaking so much about the relationship between Netherlands and Nigeria and of course how we can, we need to strengthen ties. Yes, indeed. Many countries are trying to strengthen the relationships between one another. Uh, now, um, let's look at going into, going to your country to do business or coming from your country to do business, visa issues and all of that. Uh, that's part of the ease of doing business thing in Nigeria. We're trying to make issuing visa very very easy so tell us how has it been in your in your end no i uh, i agree a visa for nigeria now you can get visa upon arrival uh, at the airport which is indeed uh, a very very welcoming uh, development uh, if you look at visa for the netherlands of course obviously if you want exchange uh, and if you want people to broaden their scope they should be able to travel uh, in both directions uh, so also towards europe um, you might know that the, the, the visas for the Netherlands, the Schengen visas for the Netherlands, uh, we don't issue them ourselves, but it's the French uh, consulate in Lagos and the Belgian embassy in Abuja who, uh, who issue visas for, uh, for the Netherlands, for, uh, for the Schengen area. Um, and that's basically, that's a process, you know, that, that sometimes there are some issues, some problems or some forms that were not filled out completely. Uh, but generally we encourage people to travel, definitely. Mm. Now, look, look at the prospects now. You've been in Nigeria for, for how long? For three and a half years now. Three and a half years. And you've seen so many things. You've seen, you've seen how resilient Nigerians are. You know, we, 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 we're strong people. We, what are your prospects? What do you expect? Do you see us? We're out of the recession. Yes. And we intend to grow the economy. What ways, what do you think we need, really needs to be done? Even by we Nigerians, not government this time around. Yes, government too. We could add what government needs to do. But what do we also need to do to move our economy forward? Yeah, that's, you know, I like to be in Nigeria. I really like to stay here uh, among the Nigerians and work with them. Uh, because Nigeria is a country where you have many, many problems that all ask for a solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a country where you lean back and you say, oh, everything will be arranged. No. And, and we all know that. And we all have our daily experiences with, with problems we have to solve. Um, so, where is it going to? I think there is really an improvement uh, also in, in, in technology, in, in access to certain things and, you know, things are improving in Nigeria but at a slow pace. And that is a pity. Um, it could go a lot faster and I think there's a combination between what the government can do indeed and what the people can do. Um, and sometimes maybe the government wants to do too much and might not have the capacity to do so. Uh, so then leave it to the private sector. Uh, you know, we've been struggling now for as long as I can remember with electricity here. Uh, so apparently something is wrong. Uh, so there I would say if, if maybe if government would sort of let go of that uh, and let's see what the private sector can do uh, in the electricity area, uh, that, would, that would really bring us further. Um, and maybe then government should focus on roads, you know. It, I've witnessed several elections in Nigeria and there is probably always a reason why to vote for a certain person and not for another person. But if I was a Nigerian, I would vote for the person who fixed my road. You know, if, if there is somebody, whether it's a governor, a minister or a president, who fixes the roads from my place to the next place and from my state to the next state, that would be the person that I would vote for. Indeed, indeed. And uh, finally, another, another thing is about taxes. Nigerians, we seem not to be paying much of tax, and many have talked about reviewing our tax system. I don't know how the tax system is in the Netherlands compared to what we have here, and how the government is also making use of the money it's gotten from tax. How is it like? The tax system in the Netherlands is, uh, let's say, if. Uh, I could complain about the tax system in the Netherlands because uh, in the end some people actually pay about 50% of their salary in taxes to the government. Uh, but they get free education in return, Great. they get health care in return, good roads, electricity and the, and the lot. So uh, people are willing to pay that because they get a lot of services in return. Um, 
in Nigeria, I, it's not for me to say anything about the tax system in Nigeria, but of course what you see is that there is only a small group of people in Nigeria who pay tax. Uh, of course, the whole informal sector is informal and, and doesn't pay tax. Um, and then some other people might just pay not really a lot. Uh, so if you want to increase government revenues, uh, yeah, people should be paying more tax. But people will only be willing to pay more tax if they see that there is a result, if they see the money is well spent. So, for example, in my country, the, the government presents the budget to parliament, exactly like we've seen uh, here. Um, but then, a year later, the government also is accountable and presents the results to the Dutch parliament. So they say, this is the money we had, and this is what we did with it. And this is left, or we couldn't finish this, or we couldn't finish that, but this is what we did. Uh, so that accountability, uh, show to the people what you did with the money. Mm -hmm. And if something hasn't happened, then explain why it hasn't happened. Indeed. Uh, Deputy Ambassador of the Netherlands to Nigeria, Michel Delling, I must thank you for sharing your thoughts with me on Business Nigeria today, looking at all of those very, very important issues. I'm, I'm really, really, really thrilled. I'm interested in, I'm waiting for the day where Nigeria will hold on so strong to the agricultural sector and we can boast of having a solid sector, just like the way our oil sector stands at the moment. Thank you again Definitely. for your time on the show. Thank you very much. Well, away from that, and for the first time, Lagos is hosting the International Drinks Festival. It's a festival that brings the industry's top professionals and consumers together for a unique experience aimed at moving the drinks business. A three-day exhibition with hundreds of brands started today with free testing and discounted sales. There is also a summit and masterclasses. Let's now go to the venue of the festival where TVC News' Bimbo Ashikbe is joining us now live. Hello, Bimbo. Hi. Yeah, just tell us what's happening over there. Hello. Yeah, take over. Uh, basically, the summit, the summit has been on for quite a while now. It started since morning at about 10.30 a.m. And the exhibition started shortly after. They're holding in the same place, but at different parts of the same place, at Federal Palace Hotel here in Victoria Island. And the summit, we've seen um, panelists come and go. They've talked about um, drinks and personal well-being in terms of your emotions and work-life balance. They've also talked about policies um, regarding drinks and you know government regulations. We've had go top government officials and private tax um, representatives representatives or private tax practitioners stand here to tell us exactly how those um, things revolve around the drink industry and uh, the intricacies of these things. And uh, at the exhibition parts, we're having every drink brand that you can think about here, showing us what they have to offer, you know, and um, helping us understand the innovation that they're bringing into the drink industry. So it's a really great festival and there's so much more to see. So, uh, Bimbo, what's the turnout like? And also, what about the uh, drink responsibly thing? I just remembered. I think um, alcoholic drinks should be for um, more than, you should be above 18 years, more than 18. So, what about that, that uh, uh, campaign? Yes. Uh, do you have any of that there? Yeah, thankfully, they're both non-alcoholic and alcoholic drinks here. Okay. Uh, but I haven't seen any children around so far. What we have here is mature adults who want to understand how the drink industry works. So it even goes beyond sampling the drinks, you know, to basically understanding how the industry itself works. For those who want to end up in that industry in one part or the other, either in production or in the um, bottom part of the um, retail, you know, in the retail parts where you're, you're selling to the consumers. There's a place for everybody here or in regulation, there is a place for everybody here. That's what the summit has helped to do. And uh, the, the, the exhibitions, the organizers have, you know, done that. They've made it clear. They drink responsibly, no drinks below, no alcoholic drinks for anyone below 18. It's all over the place. We can see it. So that's out there. There's no of, we're not flouting, nobody's flouting any rules here. Everything is according to order. And the turnout has been really great. There are people here from all walks of life, from the government, from private institutions, individual students. I'm seeing a plethora of people from different backgrounds here. And the turnout really has been great because people are still trooping in 
right now as I speak to you. As it is, the parts where the summit is holding can't take people anymore. So there a lot of people at the parts where the exhibition is holding. That's how filled up. Okay, but before, but before I let you go, let me ask you, is there any, um, do we have Made in Nigeria uh, drinks? I'm just, I just want to know, I'm curious, you know, we are pushing the Made in Nigeria brand. And also, what did they say anything about maintaining standards? You know, that's very important. Oh, definitely. In fact, the, the panel discussion that is going on right now it's particularly about you know standards, keeping to standards, ensuring that um, the drinks are fortified according to government regulations and all of that. There's a representative from the Standard Organization of Nigeria from NAFDAQ. They're all on the panel at the moment. But about the parts where we have the Made in Nigeria drinks, I think I'm just going to bring in one of the organizers to talk more on that. I've seen quite a couple of them, but it's better for the organizer to do that for to you shed more light on that for us all right so i have here with me mr aki Eshaw. he's uh, the coo of the bamora group and one of the conveners of the event good afternoon good afternoon thank you for having me all right so basically we want to find out from you how the response has been from the made in nigeria brands concerning this exhibition um, the response has been good because um, like now we have, we do have uh, you guys, we have a lot of foreign press who are interested in the local brands and um, we've been seeing people also sample drinks from these local brands and um, it, I've also actually seen a lot of people attending who are like surprised that okay yes some of these drinks are packaged this way. I'm sure if you go around the, um, go around the festival you'll be able to see more of, this, um, of these brands in the Hall 2 and the Hall 3 um, sectors of the festival. So uh, that was Mr. Akesha of the Balmoral Group. I'm still feeding my eyes on what is going on because there really is so much more to see. Um, I hope that I've given you as much information as you want to learn. At Bimbo, thank you very much there for bringing us up to speed with activities at the International Drinks Festival going on live in Lagos. Well, from business, business, drink business, business is business. As the holidays go on, business keeps going. Well, that's our show today, but before we go, let's tell you what the price of crude looks like. It's trading mix as United States shale gas surge after OPEX extension deal. Now at the London market, the European brand trades upwards at $63 per barrel. But for the OPEC basket brand, price steadies at $61 per barrel. Well, and that's a wrap on the show. Thank you very much for watching. Well, join us next week, Monday, God willing, for a fresh edition. Thank you on behalf of the entire production crew. Thanks for watching.